Goedemorgen vrienden, ons gaan vanochtend aan met Genesis. And yesterday we, we looked at Abraham having lunch with the three men that came to visit him at the trees of Mamre, where he was sitting in the heat of the day. And what a, um, what a good um, uh, gas here. What is a gas here now in Engels? What, what a, what a um, friendly man Abram was. When, when strangers came to him, he offered them food and he washed their feet and he was very hospitable. And we learned that from, from Father Abram and we can see that basically all over the, the, the Jewish culture today still. The Jewish people are very, very hospitable. And, um, and even Sarah, he, she, she immediately started baking the bread and the servants started running around. It, it's just a culture that, that the people of Yahuwah has. And I read in my quiet time this morning, um, short, uh, Saul's journey uh, through all the various towns and, and, and cities that he went. And in every town where he went to preach, there was always somebody that took him into, into their houses and into their homes and, and looking after him. And um, I just find that quite refreshing at the end of the day if we look at the, the culture we live in. We are not so hospitable anymore as, as we used to be many years ago. Uh, we looked at the uh, miracle of, of Sarahi that wasn't overlating anymore and she was promised by Yahuwah that she would have a, a child and we compared that to the miracle of, of Mary who was a virgin and, and who also had a child and we see huge miracles in both Old and New Testaments and both of them always had to do with, with the Messiah, always had to do with promise, always had to do with seed. All right, so today we continue. Uh, Genesis 18, verse 16 to 33. So let, let's read together. We just open Genesis 18. So... After um, Yahuwah ate lunch with Abraham, they started um, getting up from the, uh, from the uh, lunch table. Um, and then they, they, they started working towards uh, Sodom, verse 16. And the men rose up from there and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. So we see here that they looked towards Sodom. Now imagine that. The Almighty, already knowing what, he, what He's going to do, already knowing what His plans are, that, that he, He's coming to destroy the city. But first He stopped by His friend, the father of many nations, where the breath of God breathed in Him and in His nation, Abraham. This Almighty God is is looking towards Sodom and is so sad that nobody in that town is like this man. I mean, there he is probably standing on a hill overlooking Sodom. Abraham is standing next to him and he's looking out towards Sodom. And, and I can just imagine trying to see this man standing there on the hill with old man Abraham standing next to him. And what is going through both of their minds? And I just bring that into context today. What is Yahuwah seeing? When he's looking towards Centurion, where I live, or Brakpan, or Witbank, or Durban, or Hartebeespoor Dam, or wherever you are living, Put in, in your town's name. What is he seeing when he's looking towards your town? Okay, verse 17. And Yahweh said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I must do? So this verse, must do. He could not let Sodom continue the way they were. He must do something. And, and, he, and he already had what he was going to do in his mind. And I think it was 
it was a difficult thing for him because he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't just rush out and go and do it. He's standing there and he's thinking and he's wondering and he's contemplating and he's, he's not sure. Will I tell Abraham? Will I not tell Abraham? Why doesn't he just rush off and go and do what he, what he came to do? It, it's almost like he's stalling. Can, can you see that, that Jehovah is stalling? He must destroy it. Yet, he's still not 100% sure. Really? Really contemplating, telling Abraham about it? Really waiting to see what is, what is Abraham going to say? He's, he's wondering, should he share his plans with Abraham? Why? Why is he waiting? Why is he wondering? Why not just do what he came to do? Why having lunch with Abraham first? Why stopping at Abraham's tent while he was on his way to Sodom? Why did he not just go directly to Sodom? Do you know Yahweh's thing that he must do to your town, to your country, your continent, your world? Will he stop and have lunch with you before the final destruction of this world, like Sodom? Will he stop and tell you about his plans? Waiting to hear what you have to say? Wondering if he should share his plans with you? Stalling his destruction to see what you are going to do? Let me tell you. If you have circumcised your heart like Abraham did, if you obey immediately when he calls on you like Abraham did, if you leave the land of the Chaldeans, the Tower of Babylon, and if you follow his voice wherever he leads you, just like Abraham did, then you are Abraham's seed. And while Abraham was having lunch with the Almighty of heaven and earth, you, as his seed, was having lunch with the Almighty of heaven and earth. And while Abraham was having conversations with Yahuwah, you, as his seed, were in his loins. You, as his seed, were inside of him, and you were having conversation with Yahuwah. Every time you open your Bible, you are having lunch with the Almighty of heaven and earth. And you are having conversation with him. And you are reading about all the things which he must do. And he tells you of all the things which he must do, just like Abraham. And he is waiting to hear what you, as Abraham said, is going to say. And my question is, what are you going to say? Verse 19. For I know him, says Yahuwah, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of Yahuwah to do justice and judgment, that Yahuwah may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. So the question was, shall I tell Abraham the things which I must do? Now verse 19. If this is what Yahuwah said about Abraham, can he say this about you too as Abraham's seed? Can he really say that you will command your children and your household after him like Abraham? And that you and your household, just like Abraham and his household, shall keep the way of Yahuwah? Does Yahuwah trust you yet? like he trusted his friend Abraham. Walk in Abraham's footsteps. Come out of Babylon. Trust the God of heaven and earth and follow him and obey him and start tasting the same kind of relationship that Abraham had with this one that told him to look up at the sky and try to count you and me, you and me and millions of other people who trust and obey him, millions like the stars in heaven, like the seed in the field, the multitude of nations that will be regathered by the same one, 
that will destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. The same one. Verse 23. And Abraham drew near. So Yahuwah told Abraham about his plans. And we read here that that Yahuwah drew, uh, Abraham drew near. And, and that is guts. After hearing that and, and after knowing his reasons and knowing that he is a, a fair and a, and a just God. And if this is something he has to do, then, then there is a good reason for it. <clears throat> and yet, although Sodom deserved what was coming their way, the reason that, that Yahuwah hesitated, the reason why he stopped to have lunch with Abraham is to see if the seed of the good shepherd <coughs> is really in Abraham. But it does take guts. And for Abraham to draw near to Yahuwah and to start talking to him about his plan, that, that really took guts. And in Hebrew, that is called chutzpah. So, so Abraham started pleading. I mean, he started at, you know, if there was 50 righteous men, will you still destroy Sodom? And very humbly, very carefully, very scared, very fearfully, but very respectfully, Abraham kept on and on and on and on and on pleading and praying and begging for the lives of people that were not even his friends, people that he owed nothing. Will you do that? Will I do that? Are we like Abraham or are we like Yeshua's disciples? When in Luke 9 verse 51 to 50, 56, And it came to pass, when the time has come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. <coughs> and sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Master, will you that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Just like Yeshua's face was set towards Jerusalem, his beloved city, his bride, the place where Yahuwah called his name to be, the place where the Messiah would be rejected and tortured and killed for no other reason than that he wants to save Jerusalem. Here in Abraham we see the same attitude, the spirit and the character of the Messiah looking towards Sodom, begging the master to save it, having the guts to speak up and plead. But the disciples said, let's destroy it. Let's call fire down from heaven. <laughs> And burn the whole town. Just like Sodom was burned up with fire from heaven. Very, very interesting parallels. But those same disciples, James and John, they also went through real hard circumcision of the hearts. And both of them, although they were very arrogant to say that Let's command fire to come down and burn them up. Both of them ended up serving humanity, serving even these very same towns they wanted to destroy with fire, serving them with the same desperateness for their salvation as what their master Yeshua had, as what their father Abraham had. What do we have? Does Yahuwah hear you? with chutzpah, with guts, every day, seven days a week, 
go on and on and on and on in his ears about the salvation of people in your town, in your country, his people, his lost sheep, his children that has been deceived and lost and desperate and wicked and unjust and so sinful. Does he hear Abraham's echoes in your prayers? This almighty God already knew what his plans were. No human being, not even Abraham, were going to tell him what to do. He, he already had his plans, what he must do. Yet, he stopped at Abraham's for lunch. And he allowed Abraham to go on and on and on. Not once getting angry with Abraham, even though Abraham said many times, Please don't get angry with me, but what if, what if this, what if that? Is he maybe stopping over at your place, at my place, knowing what he must do, but desperately waiting for us to try and convince him otherwise, trying to twist his arm, trying to beg him for mercy, knowing what he must do, but not really wanting to do it. I mean, we all know that verse that says it is the will of God that nobody will, will perish, but that all will come to salvation. That is his will. He doesn't want anybody to perish, not even one of them in Sodom or in your town. It is his will that all shall be saved. Are we praying his will? Are we supporting him in his will? Are we pleading for his will? Are we fighting in the spirit for his will? Yeshua said, Don't call me master, master, and you don't do the will of my father. I just want to read for you Acts 20 verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over which the Ruach HaKodesh has made you overseers, to feed them, them which he has purchased with his own blood. And this is talking about God. Here, here Paul is saying that he has declared the counsel of God himself to all the people but now he's going up to Jerusalem to die and he's admonishing his disciples that they should take heed unto the flock that the Ruach the Holy Spirit has given them and made them leaders of and to feed them like hungry lost sheep and then he says because this flock this church this ecclesia this lost sheep is what Yahuwah has purchased with his own blood. Because the previous verse talks about God, about Yahuwah, not Yahshua. And here we've got a confirmation that God himself, a part of him in the manifestation of Yahshua, has purchased men and women with his own blood. And if the Ruach, if the Spirit is, is giving people into your hands for you to feed and for you to oversee, will you be like, like Paul that cries day and night and, and teaches people the truth? But if you read the letters of Paul, he spent more time in prayer, praying for his people than anything else. And here he's also telling his disciples that, that he's going away, but that they must take over and they must feed the lost sheep. And here <coughs> on the hill is standing God next to Abraham, looking out over Sodom. Who are they in this town that is like Abraham, that is like Paul? that even worries about the truth. Can you hear him standing next to Abraham 
wondering if he should tell Abraham. And I can just imagine that he is actually glad when Abraham does gather all his guts together and start speaking, negotiating with him from 50 down to 10, having the same care and sadness and worry and love for the lost sheep as what the shepherd has for them. Can you hear him standing next to you, waiting for you, to start pleading for the people of Sodom in your town.